an amp should be the center of your hi-fi world. Everything flows into it, and everything flows out of it. There's a lot of mystique that has sprung up around amps, and a lot of related jargon that has been created over the years, but the good news is that the standard is really high now, even for budget amps. We have included links in the description box down below which are updated for the best prices. We have one word for the Peachtree Audio Nova 300, Thunderous. It boasts roaring bass, crisp highs, and an outstanding richness that most amps can only hint at. An ESS Saber digital to analog converter and a clean digital circuit that creates some fantastic sound, particularly when it comes to shaving down the edges on harsh recordings. This is a true audiophile amp, and it's spot on for anyone wanting crisp fidelity at top volumes. This is an updated version of an already popular amp that topped this list previously, the Nova 220. We'd be crazy not to put it in the top spot, even if it does lose the visible tube from the 220 say, which we were quite taken with. Don't expect this one to be unseated for a long time to come, and hopefully, the folks at Peachtree Audio will stick it up on Amazon soon. One of its biggest advantages? It offers sound that is on par with many more expensive amplifiers. The Cambridge Audio CXA61 is an outstanding amplifier with terrific digital capabilities. It's the latest entry in the company's CX series and it fixes almost all the issues we had with the CXA60 amp. You get a full range of analog and digital inputs in a beautifully designed and distinctive interface. But most importantly, you get great sound. The audio quality is lively and rambunctious, injecting tracks with real life. This certainly isn't an amp for those who enjoy reference great sound. If you do want something with a slightly more neutral presentation, try the Parasound New Classic 200 integrated or the CXA81, an 80 watt amp from Cambridge with slightly more restrained sound. You could make an argument that the CXA61 amplifier could beat the Peachtree Audio Nova 300 in the number one spot. However, it doesn't have the raw power and energy that the Nova 300 has and we just couldn't help feeling that the price was too high. At $999, it's $400 more expensive than the original CXA60. To be fair, if you're prepared to put up with a few extra annoyances, like the reliance on a USB dongle for Bluetooth, then you can probably save yourself some money and buy that amp instead. However, none of that changes the fact that the Cambridge Audio CXA61 is one of the most enjoyable amps we've tested this year. The NAD D3045 doubles the power output to 60 watts, and adds some genuinely innovative features. Our particular favorite is the two-way Bluetooth, meaning you can not only send audio to the amp itself, but also have the amp send audio to, for example, a pair of wireless headphones. You get a phono stage for a turntable, and even an HDMI ARC channel for using this amp with a TV. NAD have really outdone themselves this time, and while this amp is no longer budget-friendly, it gives you just about everything you could possibly need. The one issue we have with it is that it's a little too expensive at launch. For comparison, the original NAD D3020V2 costs $300 less, and while it doesn't have the same advanced features, many of them, like the Phono preamp and Apps Bluetooth, are still present. As good an amp as this is, paying an extra $300 for it feels like a bit much. We're also a little surprised at the power range, 60 watt RMS, and 80 watts peak. That's surprisingly narrow, and although it's not a major issue, it could make speaker choice tricky. All the same, there are very few amps on this list with quite as many features, and if the price drops a little, this is going to rocket into the upper echelons of our picks. We like the Audiolab 6000A for its large and detailed soundstage. It really does seem to lend a system a little bit more presence and realism, making it easy to pick out the location of individual instruments. Plenty of amps do this already, but Audiolab seems to make a point of focusing on it, and it really pays off. And in general, the audio quality here does well, and is matched by a good range of features, including Bluetooth. The most glaring downside to the Audiolab 6000A is that it simply doesn't do enough to stand out from the crowd. The design is dull, playing second fiddle to the classy Cambridge Audio CXA61. It has Bluetooth, but the less expensive NAD D3045 can send it both ways. And the DAC on the Totem Kin amp does a better job. Put simply, the 6000A is a good workhorse amplifier that does everything well, but can't quite outlast the competition. The Cambridge Audio AXA 35 is an enjoyable, if somewhat basic, stereo amplifier. 
The Amp's balanced and clean audio quality makes a great alternative to the thundering Onkyo A9110 or the treble-minded Denon PMA600 Ni, both of which are in the same price range. One of its big selling points is the design, which utilizes all of Cambridge's helpful tricks, like upside-down labeling on the rear ports. The company already makes some of the best apps available right now, the CXA61 is currently in our top 3, above, and it's great to see them releasing a more wallet-friendly product. It means that the AXA35 should be considered by anybody looking for a budget amp, although as we said, it doesn't do anything that other amps don't do already. There's also no DAC, which may be a problem for those looking for a single box solution. Check out the aforementioned Denon if that's you. We also had some issues with the remote, which felt floaty and imprecise. While the AXA35 definitely isn't the best amp on this list, it's good enough to be worthy of your consideration.